when you come. It's time to think about a different line of business. Are you getting on?
favor, puto, ah, qué chingado. Ah, John, excuse me. Oye, mamita, cuando te vea la próxima vez, que sea un poco más durito, ¿eh? Come on, mi hermano. This is the day we have both been waiting for. Bien, vamos, hermano. My brother, I just received word of your fight with Ajibis Lang and El Sepul. My men will launch a ruse attack on the side entrance to the fort. Meanwhile, you, my American friend, will drive this wagon at the front gate and jump off when you're close. It's been packed with five crates of TNT. That sounds crazy. How long's the fuse? <laughs> yes, like I say, fun times. It's plenty long enough, I think. I see you in there, amigo. Let's go. Remember to jump, my friend.
día de traición. Hello, old friend. It's been a long time. <laughs> Hello, brother. It's uh, good to see you. I heard you was coming. You took your time, no? Come on, you're not gonna shoot your own brother, are you? We was family. Yeah, we were. Then you and Dutch went crazy and family didn't mean so much. <laughs> so now you do the government's work. And what do you do? You just work for a different government. <laughs> Come on, brother. I think we should go our separate ways, huh? What you and Dutch did was wrong. And the way you left me was wrong. Now, I hate to judge, but as it turns out, it's you or me. The way I see it, might as well be you. We thought you was dead, brother. I promise. I'm telling the truth. Besides, I can give you Bill. In Dutch, Dutch is in Colombia. I can take you straight to him. Hmm? If you left me to die, whoa. to save your own skin, and now <laughs> you expect me to care whoa, about whoa, you? You got it all wrong, brother. I've always loved you. Even now. Who's having go fishing with now, huh? I waited a long time for this! Marston, come with me. The army sent reinforcements. Come. The army is Sigue. coming. Get up there and man that cannon. ¡Vista a la derecha! Two old friends reunited. It is a beautiful thing. Mr. Marston, fancy seeing you down here. Well, it is a pleasant surprise, I must say. He's not looking very healthy. We told you to keep them alive. You should be glad to have him at all. Just remember your obligations to the government, Mr. Marston. We need you to find Williamson, then head to Blackwater as 
quick as you can. We have reason to believe that uh, Dutch Vandalin is in the area. Your wife sends her regards. <laughs> Voltealo, voltealo, 
¡Quítate, Ahí. estúpido! ¡Le voy a dar un balazo! Ahí. ¡Quítate! Ahí. ¡Quítate, Ahí. pendejo! Ahí. ¡Quítate! Ah. ¡Una, Ahí. dos, tres! Escuchen, rebeldes. Escuchen cómo aguantamos a otra vez. Welcome to Mexico. My brothers and I are just discussing the future of our country. Okay, let this man go. And who are you, gringo? I'm no one. But unless you want this town to tear you and your boys to shreds, I suggest you let him go. And you think you could tell me what to do, friend? Oh, you should listen to him, friend. Look at that. You want to risk it? <laughs> the American is a drunk. If I were you, I would, I would pull that trigger. <laughs> Put the gun down, Americano. Ya, ya, mátalo. Dejen mi hombre. Mierda. Huh? Ay, Dios Man. mío. Santa Maria! Do so you want to settle this now, friend? Or you want me to shoot you in the head right now for that poor girl? Okay, but we fight like men, not like dogs. <sighs> Thanks, my brother. Now the people are finally ready. Today we overthrow the coronel. Senor, there are prisoners in jail who will fight on our side. Can you save them? Some of my best men are held in Allende's jail. They will be a great help to us. Abraham. Abran paso, cabrones. Ya no sufrimos la tiranía.
gentlemen. Machine gun, John. We can use gunpowder to blow the door open. Wait while we get everything into position. And get out of the wagon! Apurate! I'm coming out! Don't shoot! Here! Take Williamson! Just let me live! I will leave the country, I promise! You always was weak-minded! You're the one who let Dutch drive you insane! Dutch wanted you dead! <laughs> oh, all right, John! I, I, I'll, I'll come quietly! Allende is dead! Mexico is mine!
My people are free, and it is all thanks to you, John. And to the people who laid down their lives. People like Louisa. Oh, yes. She, she was very brave, and she will be missed. Who was she again? Your peasant girl wife-to-be? Oh, yes, of course. She, she will have a day named after her. Laura's day! Louisa. What? Oh, yes, I, I knew Laura as well. Magnificent girl. Like riding a pompous bull it was, amigo. You never saw anything like it. Anyway, enough about sport. Let's get back to politics. I trust you will join us in riding on the capital. I'd love to, but with Williamson dead, my jailers need me back in Blackwater. Hey, que hacen? Levantense! Well, I must say, I'll miss you, John Marston. I doubt you'll even remember me, Abraham, but it's been an experience. Good luck with the revolution. If you win power, remember why you wanted it. Mm. Well, travel safely, amigo. Moon. How about we keep this between ourselves? de Santa solo permite que yo le toco a su pistola. That's good, thank you. Nos vemos otro día. See you soon. You know about dedos torcidos?
John, ¿cómo estamos? Hola. Hey, mister. Hola. That's all I need for now. I can't refuse a man his dying wish. Vamos, gringo! I wish everyone to see me be a hero! Sorry, mister. Hola, señor. ¿Qué tal? Marston. ¿Entiendes? ¿Con qué remedio te puedo ayudar? Howdy. El coronel Appreciate tiene muchos it. espías en escalera. Si el resultado no es bueno... Hola. ¿Cómo te va? Anda. Sube, gringo. Where can I take you?
Doors, Casa Madrugada. You sleep. I will wake you when we arrive. I'm gonna take a nap.
Take me to Blackwater. Get some sleep, compadre. It's a little distance from here.
John Marston, hello to you. Estamos. Get a real kick if you joined us for some cards.
Careful, mister. Sorry, right, mister. Marston, you may be famous, but I don't cotton a root now. That's good, thank you. Don't cause any trouble. Good to see, see you again soon. This city wouldn't run without me. How do you do, Mr. Marston? Hey there, what can I do for you? Why, hello. That Barrington Apollo Razor will give you the cheeks of a newborn. I guarantee. I'm always interested, mister. That's what I want. Let's see you. All right. You have a good day, okay? Mr. Marston, how are you today? See Mr. Ross? 107, 109. Edgar Ross. 113. Upstairs on the right. 114. 115. 116. 117. Mr. Marston, so glad to see you. How was your journey? Where's my wife and son? Being well looked after. Well looked after. I want to see him. Mr. Ross wants to speak with you. We've had some important developments. You want me to take out a gun and blow a fucking hole in your head right here? <clears throat> right now? You want that? Mr. Marston. You want that? Mr. Marston, I ask you to calm down. Why? Why? I did what you asked. I got you Williamson and Escuela. It's over. Stop playing games with me. No one's playing games with you, Mr. Marston. But if we were to play some games, there'd be some interesting ones we could play. Thanks, sir. Like hanging you for murder, or confiscating all of your property, like that little farm of yours, or, or having you put in an electric chair. Those are the sort of games we could play. But we choose to play a different game. So calm down and play along with us. Where's my wife? <laughs> you know, I forget, but I hear it's very nice this time of year. <sighs> Mr. Marston, please, I've never insulted your meager intelligence. Do not insult mine. We've done this little deal for your freedom in exchange for all your men from your old gang. You gave us Williamson and Escuela. We still don't have Vanderlyn, but now we know where he is. Then go and shoot him. No, sir. I want you to shoot him for me. And then I'll let you be. The last thing I want to do is make martyrs out of all these people. He could be killed by some petty squabble by another lowlife. <laughs> we believe Vanderlyn just holed up with a group of renegades near the wreck of the Serendipity Riverboat. Ah, <sighs> yes. Another group of renegades. 
Obviously, the first group, your group, has, shall we say, been disbanded? <laughs> <laughs> disbanded. Anyway, Mr. Ford and Mr. Marston, shall we go? Oh, Mr. Marston, your wife and son are, are doing well. Let's both try to ensure things stay that way. Okay? After you, sir. Oh, Mr. Marston, one more thing. This is for you. You're too kind. See, I have nothing but your best interest at heart. Let's hope it doesn't go off by mistake. 343. I, I have a patent for that, sir. This is an outrage. Oh, Mr. Marston. <laughs> You're alive. Hello, Wes Dickens. <laughs> Thought you were headed to Peking. Um, so did I. So did I. A long story. But now it seems I'm being put under arrest and charged with narcotic possession or some other such nonsense. Ross, have him release this man. Why? Because he's a harmless old fraud, the kind of man that built this country. And because he helped me get Williamson. Did you hear that, officer? The man's a hero. Let him go. Come on, Marston. Moral degeneracy waits for no man. Let's hurry along. <laughs> 344, 347, 348, 3... That's it! You're all out of last chances! Head for the wreck of the serendipity, Mr. It's not far now. The old serendipity wreck has been used as an occasional criminal hideout for years. We were informed that Vanderlyn and his gang are making camp there. We'll stop on the cliff above, and you and Agent Fordham will go on foot. I'll stay with the vehicle and keep watch. And you'll do as I say, Marston. Don't try anything stupid. Oh, I think he knows what's at stake. Don't you, Mr. Marston? Let's find Dutch and finish this. Stop shooting, you lunatic! Right, let's go, Mr. Marston. Yes, sir. Vanderlind is the priority. We go in, take him down, get the hell out of here. What are you doing? Seems real quiet, don't you think? You tell me. Maybe Dutch caught wind of things. An informant better not have been lying to us. Keep your eyes open. They are open. I don't see nothing. It doesn't feel right. This place is usually teeming with lowlifes. Did you hear that? Go see what's happening up there. I'll wait here.
Good God, that's her informant. Gnostics, what the hell's going on here? It's a trap. Shit, Marston, you'll have to carry this man. I don't think he can walk. Bastard! Come on, we need to get him to safety. It's over! You hear me? My word. No, Let's take too damn close. Put down your weapons! Come on, let's head for the pier. Come on, we have to get out of here! You die now! I'll gun down the lot of me! God's name is going on. Marston, lift this fellow into the back seat. Put him in the car so we can get out of here. Let's go. There might be more of them. Christ alive! What the hell happened down there? It was a trap. They were waiting for us. And who is this savage? A prisoner? This is the informant, sir. Do you speak English? Uh, uh yes he does, sir. He's the informant. Nostas. Don't get snarky with me, Fordham. We found him tied up on the boat. Then they jumped us. Nice of you to help us out. Hell of a plan sending in two men to take on an entire gang of outlaws. Especially when one of them's an office clerk. Or social secretary or some you such. You shut your mouth! just gave out. Well, fix it, you fool. We need to get this man to a doctor. Of course, sir. It's Dutch's men. Marston, we'll hold them off. Fordham, we'll fix that damn engine. Oh, my good God! I can't see any more of them. Fordham, are we ready? Yes, sir, I think so. 
Come on, let's get back to Blackwater. Damn, that was close. We're lucky. We should take the Indian to Professor McDougal. See what he can get out of him. Good idea, sir. I just can't communicate with them. Here we are. Thank God for that. So, this is the office of an anthropologist named McDougal. He was thrown out of Yale for a degeneracy. We should tell you something. Indeed. But he's been helping us deal with the natives in this area. They see him and they presume we're all idiot academics. Huh? Give me a hand here, Marston. Ah, Mr. Ross. Uh, Mr. Fordham? Good day. Good day. What on earth's going on here? Kid got shot in the leg. <sighs> Beat up pretty good. We'll send a doctor. Now, McDougal. Mm -hmm. <sighs> we need information from this fellow about Dutch Vanderland. Can you see what you can find out for us? Do my best, sir. Make sure you do. <laughs> Professor McDougal has been a good friend of the U.S. government, Mr. Marston, just like you. Why don't you see if you can help him in his study of the native problem in this county? That's a good thought. Mr. Marston. Mr. Marcy. Governor, she can be playing. Of course. You feel it? Yes. Come play. My speeches are revered in the family corner of Great Plains. Hello, sir. No need for that, partner. Fine morning for it, mister. Hi there. Hello, sir. Mr. Marston. Let's clean this dealer out. Guess that wasn't my finest hour. Mr. Marston. These cards are ready for your hand. Yes. Hello. Look 
out, lady. Step to it, mister. Oh, incredible. Simply incredible. Hello, Professor. Uh, hello, sir. Oh, Mr. Marston, sir. Good day, good day. How are you? Well, my family's health and well-being are being threatened by some unscrupulous government agents, and my own hard-won freedom is under duress. But these problems aside, I suppose I'm fair. Ah, <laughs> yes, the problems of civilizing nomads. Uh, tell me, sir, are you from Norse stock? Not as far as I know. I was raised in an orphanage. My father was Scottish. Hmm, unfortunate. Uh, uh, you'd make an interesting case for my theory of natural population characteristics. Really? Well, yes. A, a white man, obviously, but, but, but with a savage spirit. Uh, uh, trust me, sir, I mean savage in the best possible sense. Uh, natural nobility, but also simple, uh, pure. Uh, I've been looking at some blood samples through my microscope, and, and you know what? No. Oh, well, of course you don't. It's a remarkable breakthrough. I've been looking at the blood of both natives and white men of corresponding height, weight, and age, and you know what? Again, no. They're exactly the same. It's remarkable. It completely refutes my last book. But I'll tell you what, sir. This sabbatical in the field may have been somewhat forced upon me by circumstance, but my scholarship has benefited enormously. Would you uh, like to partake of a syringe of cocaine? I've quite enough for two. Not right this minute, no. So it's such a remarkable drug. It entirely restores the ego. It takes one back to a primal state. It helps my thinking enormously. <laughs> oh, oh, Nastas, uh, uh, come on. Uh, come in, sir. Would you like to take off your slippers? Or, or, or skin a rabbit? <clears throat> I know. We cannot see the stars, but still my heart is pure, and we meet as equals. These savages must be spoken to simply in metaphors. <laughs> no, sir. I grew up on a reservation and attended school. Oh, lovely. <laughs> but I can show you what you want to see. I know where the group of bandits you seek are hiding, both of you. Vanderlyn has attracted a following of young men on the reservation. They are turning to bad things. The savage heart cannot be conventionally civilized. I was right all along. <laughs> Where's Dutch Vanderlyn based? In the hills, in Cochinet. Let's go. I know a way there that is not guarded. Uh, marvelous. <laughs> it's simply marvelous. Mister? Time to do our bit for humanity, Mr. Marston. Come, let's hurry. Stay close. Whoa, whoa. Come on. Easy. So, I understand we have a mutual interest in Mr. Vanderlyn. Oh, no. You gonna kill him too? Kill him? Good God, no. What is it with you people out here? No, Vanderlyn fascinates me. A white man living among natives. A civilized mind turned savage. It's reverse integration or regressive acculturation. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't found a name I like. He was never that civilized! Come on! Look, Mr. Marston! Buffalo! Oh, what a noble beast! I see him! The white man will soon be the end of them. What on earth are you talking about, Nastas? Too much hunting, sir. He's gone away! My nerves are all in the Your whole society is based around hunting. But we hunt to eat, not for sport. Soon, there will be no buffalo. Extinction is a myth.
Darwin, reputed by Darwin. Species don't die, they evolve. Hunting in time will make the buffalo stronger. These trees are quite foreboding, Nastasa. Are, are you sure this is the right way? Yes, sir. It's rather dark. Ain't you never seen trees before? I thought you were a brave cultural explorer. It's this way, hey. mister. Come on. Good lord, no. I rarely leave my room. I explore with the mind, Mr. Marston. Enjoy it while you still can. Soon you will have cut down all of these trees. Me? Or are you making a sweeping statement about the white man in general? Oh. That's some kind of battle Whoa, line, yeah. Mr. Marston. There is no respect for the land anymore. I'm sensing some hostility, Nastas. Some anger. Talk me through this primal emotion, where it's coming from. Don't worry about it, Professor. Come! I'm afraid I don't really have much of a head for heights. More of a, a head for highs. <laughs> well, well, anyway, I'm sure Nastas will help you. I must be on my way. I've got work to do. Thanks for the help. Goodbye, gentlemen. Enjoy yourselves. Come on. I see a spot. Give me your leg. Come on, I won't drop you. can find another route, Mr. Marston. I will have a look around. There's a cave over here. Might go through or up the mountain. Good. This should save us some time. This way. Go this way! 
Dynamite! Get out of here! I'm hurt pretty bad. I don't think you should go any further. I'll be fine. But you go ahead. I don't want to slow you down. Are you sure you're all right? Just need to take it slow. Go on. I'll catch up or see you on the way down. Don't worry about me. Go look for Vanderlyn. Good luck. Go on. You don't want to miss your chance. I'll be fine. That's a good price. Oh, what were you eating?
Mr. Marston? Mr. Marston! Mr. Marston! Here you go, Mr. Marston. Put that stuff away. You banged your head. Nastas and I carried you down. Mm. Well, uh, Nastas uh, heard the shots and he hurried up to rescue you and he carried you down. I improvised an escape plan. I'm more of a planner than a man of action. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Friends of mine are with Vanderland. We must try to reason with them, sir. Vanderland's gang contains several natives. We must meet with them and try to save them from disaster. My people have already endured many disasters. Before, this was all our land. And now we have brought you civilization. Oh, sure, it hasn't been easy, but it hasn't been easy for anyone, Nastas. Why, I knew a man in Yale whose father once shot 18 natives in one afternoon out in Wyoming. Oh, the man was quite, quite traumatized. He took to lying with choir boys. For a wise man, you are a very stupid man, mister. Gentlemen, I'm going to leave you to figure out right from wrong. You are simple-minded, sir. Thus, I do not blame you for not understanding reason. Uh, then again. <laughs> hello, hello. If it ain't the famous John I Marston. do beg your pardon. Hello, sir. The telephone is a demonic tool of the weak and unrighteous. Hello there. Uh, hello, Mr. I don't think that's a good idea. Marston, good to see you. Whoa, mister. Ah, Marston, sir. It's good to see you, old bean. Good to see you. And you too, Professor. Forgive me. I am in a state of remarkable agitation, partly due to standard narcotic impulses, but also due to the fact that I have finally solved the riddle that has tormented my mind these past eight years. What's that? The nature of the savage soul! What makes some societies great, like ours, and others, uh, yeah, not worse. I would never use a pejorative such as worse, but, 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 but lesser! Meaning? Meaning. What makes these beings less human than us? Closer to beast on the continuum between animal and god! You know, I argued with Fortescue at Yale about this. It caused a minor scandal. But I shall be proven right, sir! I shall! Mark my words! I shall show them all what civilization is all about. The redskins and the nubs at Yale. Come, sir! I have a way to say to both our desires. I will bring you, Vanderlint and me, the evidence of savages reverting to type! Come, sir! Fine! 
follow me. I asked the stuffs to bring the horses around front. Get, get, quick, man, quick. My heart's beating like a drum. Try to calm down, Professor. Calm down? I I've never been so excited in all my life. Hello, Professor. Mr. Marston. Yeah. This is it! <laughs> Years of research! What were you talking about back there? Where are we going? Nastas has set up a meeting. A powwow, I think they call it. A meeting of minds, of souls. Indians and whites, academics and criminals coming together to find a common understanding. Nastas, this fool's making no sense. Some of Vanderlyn's men have agreed to meet with Professor McDougal up at Fairclaw Cabin. Why the hell would they want to do that? I think they are interested to find out what conclusions a white man has reached on hundreds of years of culture and society from the comfort of his hotel room. Wonderful! Do you think I could ask for a skin sample from the soles of their feet? I don't think that's a good idea. I have to say, <laughs> a touch of the old jitters. No kid. It's no small relief to have the two of you along with me. Especially you, Nastas. You really have made remarkable progress in the short time I've known you. I'm glad you have found it useful. I've always been a little afraid of savages, if I'm honest. But you're the... Whoa, it's there. a bear! For the love of God! Are you crazy? What's wrong with you? Idiot! My God, that was terrifying! Did I say we leave before any of his friends turn up? Come on! My goodness, I'm still shaking! What a ferocious animal! That bear showed no signs of aggression. If we hadn't shot first, it most likely would have ignored us and moved on. All very well for you. Hello, gentlemen. We come in peace. Those words mean nothing coming from people like you. Look at what you've done to us. Look at us! We live like animals, scrabbling in the dirt. Well, I... But, but I... But violence isn't the answer! Maybe you live in a different America than we. Men like Vanderlint will lead you to disaster. I think we've already experienced disaster. The likes which you could only imagine. Put your hands up! We come in peace! But who is he says, Marston? You call this a meeting? Give me your damn weaponry. This is not what we agreed to. You shut your mouth, you treacherous snake! <laughs> Holy shit! Damn it! Don't touch! <laughs> Professor, get down now! Who's there? there? Kill the star! <laughs> you have to get us out of here! Stay down and keep quiet! Just leave me! I save you! You puny sidewinder! Oh, you don't! I've had enough computer work for today! Time to return home, sir! Right! Let's go now while we got the chance! Yes! Let's get out of this hellhole and back to civilization! There we go! Come on! Come on! Dutch is 
gang. It's a little soon to be drawing conclusions on an entire people. This is very disheartening. I reach out again. Come on. I'll drop the hundred fools like you. of my life. I wish I could say the same. Blackwater. Oh, I will never talk ill of you again. Civilization in all its glory, Mr. McDougal. And am I glad to be back. I'm in dire need of a syringe. Something to clear the mind, to restore the spirit. So you ain't planning on sleeping then? Sleep? My dear boy, I'll probably never sleep again. Whoa! Giddy up! Come! Good to see you. You got money, right? I'm a campfire bird with a rugged good look. Safe and sound. Thank the Lord. So much for a meeting of minds. Thank you, Mr. Marston. I could be boiling in a pot right now if it wasn't for you. Get some rest, Professor. One day, I'm gonna be mayor of this place. We'll see. So I've heard. Let me have your see you, Mr. Martha. We will leave the cards ready for your hand. Forgive me, miss. I ain't all there today. Mr. Monster. Greetings to salutation. I hear Mr. Reyes wants to see someone go be the mayor like the dabble in opium. Very happy I see you, Mr. Master. I'm so sorry, sir. Ho oh, there! What a pleasant surprise, Mr. Marston. An informer just told us some interesting news. Our mutual friend, Mr. Vanderlyn, is about to pay call on his bank manager. What do you say to having a little financial discussion with the fellow? This way. Let's get up on the roof. We'll have a clear shot at them from there. the only way in and out of the building. So cover it tight. Do you see those horses to the left by the building across the street? Dutch's boys hitched them there. They'll have to run that way to make their escape. Don't start shooting until they're out in the open. If we spook them, they might retreat back and hole up inside. Don't shoot till I give you the signal. Keep your sights trained on that bank door. 
I'm no saloon sheriff. I'm Nobody Guy shoots Crossfield, until I say. And I don't pander about. Someone's coming out. He's unarmed. Hold your fire. Oh, the bastards kill him. Open fire. You really think you're better than the law? Take out those snipers in the window. with Hopkins and Manny. Get Dutch. Be careful. There may be some innocent people there. Nice to see you, John. Hello, Dutch. How's Abigail? Well, I hope. I ain't seen her for a while. Because you've been chasing me? Let the woman go, Dutch. Of course. Of course. How's your little boy? He ain't so little now. No, oh, he must be what? 15? 16? Doesn't time fly? Don't adjust. It's over, man. Of course. 
Of course. I surrender, John. You're the master now. I've been my master since you left me to die. I took you for an errand boy. Just trying to help my family, Dutch. By making compromises, we all have to. Now let her go. It's over. You want the girl, John? You always were the romantic sort. You know, gentlemen, this man here, oh, he married a whore. Used to ride with us. We all had her. Oh, but he married her. And you know that makes him a better man than us. He's a better man. Have the girl, John. Easy, Dutch. She's a parting gift from me. God damn! Holy sh! I don't see him. What the hell happened in there? This is your fault, Marston. You got a gun too, Sheriff. You waited too long. Next time, I'll just shoot the girl. That's enough. Come on, let's find the bastard. No, no, I went this way. Yeah, Abraham, yeah! Yeah! Let's just say, Dutch ain't gone and got himself saved. He killed some poor woman. There's an old logging camp further down this road. It's been abandoned for years. Go down! Stay with the group! Yeah. So that's the great Dutch? What a role model! The man who made you who you are. I guess so. Has he changed? No, still the same crazy bastard he turned into. How was it seeing him after all this time? Hug on your heartstrings? He kind of reminds me of you. A violent piece of shit who went and confused himself with God. Isn't that sweet of you? And now you must kill him. Your side is chosen. My side ain't chosen. My side was given. I'd kill you a hundred times before I killed Dutch. If it was an option. Hallelujah! I think we're finally reaching an understanding, Mr. Marston. Look! That's Dutch's car! Hurry! He can't have got far! Where's Dutch, Marston? He got away. Uh, scared to shoot him? Too much to handle? When the opportunity presents itself, I'll put a bullet in him, don't you worry. Won't like myself for doing it, but I'll do it. Ah, good man, good man. You know, at the end of this, you'll probably get a medal. I know I shall.
You know that engine is ready for you. Professor! Oh, it's you, dear boy. Come in, come in, and shut the door. What's going on? Scholarship cannot proceed, sir. No, I don't. I'm not having a bullet in your flipping neck, sir. I'm not cut out for this. No, I'm not cut out for this at all. <laughs> nope. They're fucking savages! Savages! I think we all are. Not me, sir. I'm from Connecticut. I'm a professor at Yale. I write books. I do not deserve to die out here. Where's my tincture? Oh, yes. Dandy, sir. Just dandy. Ah, ah. Ah, oh, great heavens above! Is that you, John? Hello, Dutch. <laughs> I think that's what they call two for the price of one out here in this wonderful place. Maybe so, Dutch. You and, and, and your friend there, the professor? We're gonna kill the both of you. Why you want to do a thing like that? I don't know. Sport, I guess. Fair enough. Oh. Why don't I come out there? We fight. Let the professor go and send your boys back to their families. Well, that, that sounds like a beautiful plan, John. Only problem is, my boys here, they already lost their families a long time ago. We aren't thieves, John. We're fighting for something a, a bit like you. Only we're fighting for an idea, not just for ourselves. That's beautiful, Dutch. 
You always were a fine speaker. I was. Now, would you kindly send that academic out here so we can show him what we really think about the art of anthropology? Please, sir, what are we going to do? I'm going to hand you over to him and watch him tear you limb from limb. What? I'm just kidding. We're going to run across the rooftops. Get you back to your ivory tower. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me. We're still here. Come on. <laughs> Good day, sir. Uh, madam. Look here, sir. What is the meaning of this this outrage? You two stay down and shut up. Come on, we can get to the roof this way. Do something! He's going to kill me! Stay back, or the teacher gets it! Ah! Pass the Stop whining for Christ's sake! I think that's most of them. The coast looks clear. Come on then, let's make a break for it! Hurry, Marston! <gasps> the horses should be in an alleyway down here!
My research is complete. Much as I thought, there's no civilizing this savage land. I could have told you that for nothing. Ah, but they'll give me a prize in New Haven for this. <laughs> well, they bloody better. Well, goodbye, Mr. Marston. Best of luck, dear friend. So long, Professor. So long, sir. Oh, Pete! John Marsh! My name's Hal Pollard. Howdy. I'm Hal Pollard. How do you do, Mr. Marston? Thank you. Daisy says she's a child, but I ain't touched her in one. Oh. Need a ride, friend? Where you need to go, friend? Hey, these are old horses. Can't just... Oh, all right. Take me to Blackwater. Just relax, take a nap. You're in good hands. Just like the telegraph in the morning, John. You mind if I take a nap? That's all she wrote, buddy. Ah, 
Marston's meaner than hey there, buddy. Careful, mister. What do you want, Marston? My family. I've done what you asked. <laughs> no, you haven't. This is the land of opportunity, and I gave you the opportunity to save your family, and you failed. How could I possibly reward you? Marston, you're a public menace. We should have had you killed. I wish you had. But since you didn't, where's my family? Oh, spare me the noble savage fall on the sword tripe, will you, oh boy? It's nauseating. You don't wish to be dead. You're an insignificant creature desperately clinging on to life like the rest of the scum in this town. Yeah, I know, it's tough. You like Dutch. He's a charming fellow. He makes sense. He's like one of those nature writers from back east. Only he takes things a tiny little step too far. Rather than just loving the flowers and the animals and the harmony between man and beast, <laughs> he shoots people in the head for money and disagreeing with them. He's a goddamn killer. Now, I'm not a great intellect, but the metaphysical leap from admiring the flower to shooting a man in the head because he doesn't like the flower is a leap too far. So, I know it's easy. <laughs> you see, we, me and Archer, we're the bad guys. We enforce the rules. Now, while the rules may not be perfect, they're really not so bad. Exactly. What's the alternative? Yeah. See, I'll tell you what the alternative is. It's not complicated. It's about one man and his gun versus another man. <laughs> sure, civilization may be dull, but the alternative, Mr. Marston, is hell. And the way you enforce this civilization, this freedom for men to like or not like flowers, or whatever in God's name you were just talking about, is to kidnap a man's wife and son? Well, I know there's contradictions. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> As I said, I'm not a great intellect. Now. After the debacle with the army and the bank, we have to put Mr. Vanderlyn to rest ourselves. Will you help us? Do I have any choice? Now that you mention it, no. Then what was that pretty speech in aid of? I don't rightly know, but it sure felt good saying it. <laughs> Shall we, Mr. Marston? Let's go. Let's see if we can put this to rest. Here are the cow! Look, they brought the machine gun! What's the word, Captain? We spotted one of Dutch's men about an hour ago. 
I think he took the bait. Let's get in position then. Have your men ready to run him down if you have to. Dismiss! Load weapons and get to the sandbags! Move! Are you ready to finish this, Mr. Marston? I guess so. Well, Mr. Marston, it seems like your mentor, Dutch, no longer looks quite so kindly to his student. That man is insane. So it seems. I think we need to get him before sundown. As you say, Captain. 
Otherwise, he'll be gone again. And what if I say no? <laughs> now, before I shoot you myself, let me just point out the obvious. The one person we have left that can appeal to Mr. Vanderlyn is the last person we know who knows him. Your wife. That won't be necessary. Mr. Ross, Captain, let's go. <clears throat> Mount up, men. Let's move out. Come on. gate open. Move, soldier! Dead man! Oh, 
guess that's that. Good work, man. Marston, come on. Me? Right, Marston. We'll take two men with us. The rest will stay here and take care of the wounded. They'll plant charges at the gate. You and I will provide the cover fire. This is it, men. Let's get that gate down. Keep them covered now, Marston. Hold them off! We need time to set the explosives! Drop your weapon! I need to get out of Come here! Come on! Marston! Leave him wide open! You ain't very frightened! alone your father thought he had a boy damn son of a bitch god damn it you'll never take me alive John It's over, John. I ain't leaving here without you. Just like me, John. You can't change who you are. I ain't like you. I ain't like you! the past, John. Killing me, it won't make it go away. That's where you're wrong.
Hello again, John. Hello, Dutch. We gotta stop meeting like this. Sure. I got a plan, John. You always got a plan, Dutch. This is a good one. I don't doubt it. We can't always fight nature, John. We can't fight change. We can't fight gravity. We can't fight nothing. My whole life, all I ever did was fight. Then give up, Dutch. But I can't give up, neither. I can't fight my own nature. That's a paradox, John. You see? Then I have to shoot you. When I'm gone, they'll just find another monster. They have to. Because they have to justify their wages. That's their business. Our time has passed, John. So at the end, you didn't have the guts to shoot him. The man's dead, Ross. Sure. Can I see your gun? Hmm. Oh, trust me. It looks better in the report that way. Where's my family? Uh, your wife was killed in a prison riot last week. So, <laughs> I'm only joking, dear boy. They were sent back to that Scrabble ranch of yours in Beecher's Hope. They're quite safe and sound. They better be. Thank you, Mr. Marston, for everything. I know this wasn't easy for you, but I have to say, You've done your country proud. Yeah, exactly. See you around, John. Try to stay out of trouble. Come on, Archer. Let's go find somebody else we can annoy. Abigail! Jack! Anyone here? Anyone home? Oh, darling. I never thought I'd see this day again. You no good hillbilly piece of shit! I thought you was dead! I thought you was dead, John, huh? Where you been? Where you been? You know where I've been, darling. 
You know. You saw Dutch, didn't you? Yeah, I saw him. And Bill? Yeah, I saw him too. And you didn't go back to him? I left that life. Just as you left yours. How'd they treat you? Oh, I can take care of myself, John. One guard got funny on me one time, but I wasn't so ladylike and he didn't try it again. Nor no one else. How's the boy? Oh, like you. And like me. Well, he's like a kid growing up without a father. That ain't fair. What is fair? Well, some trees flourish, others die. Some cattle grow strong, others are taken by wolves. Some men are born rich enough and dumb enough to enjoy their lives. Ain't nothing fair, you know that. We tried to change, I mean, ain't that what you're supposed to do? We did change. And it's over now. Jack! Jack, come here, boy. Hello, sir. Come here. How you been? Coyotes ate all the chickens and poachers took the cattle. I tried, Father. I tried. I know you did, son. I know. And don't you go blaming me, boy. Don't you go blaming me. I ain't blaming no one, old man, but since you're still alive, there's four mouths to feed and no cattle. That's a nice way to greet somebody. Why don't I get to warm and tender embrace? Consider the fact I ain't put a bullet in you, your embrace, old man. You were supposed to look after the place. I did. Well, I did my best. Thing is, there was too many of them. Uh, I thought you was dead. I wasn't drinking. Hold your excuses until you figured out which one to use. Jack, go get your bags packed, boy. We got work to do. We leave in the morning. Go on. Yes, sir. Where are you going? Well, it's getting kind of dark now, but in the morning we've got to go get ourselves some more cattle. I've got friends at McFarland's ranch. It's over in Hennigan's stead who can sell us some. Now, Abigail, I hope you learn to cook. Oh, yes, didn't I say? Rather than some prison, they actually kept me incarcerated in a cooking school for young ladies. Hello, sir. Are you ready? Let's haul out. Come on. How are you feeling, Jack? I'm feeling fine, sir. We got a decent ride ahead of us. Let's go. And Bill, why you went away? Who told you that? I kept hearing people say their names. That, that's all. Yeah, I caught up with Bill and Dutch. 
We had some old business needed settling. Where are they now? They're gone, son. We won't be seeing them again. They were angry at you, weren't they? That's why we had to leave. They was just good men who turned bad. I'll explain it to you one day. And what does that make you? I guess I'm a, a bad man. A man who tried to be a good father. I don't know. Every man has a right to change. A chance of forgiveness. So, you ready to learn about herding cattle? I've never seen you herd anything, Pa. Apart from the odd pack of drunks. The McFarlands were good to me, and I helped them out in return. I learned a few things along the way. Wait till you see their ranch. It's what ours will be one day. I read in the newspaper their ranch is dead. Soon it'll just be factories and businesses around here. You shouldn't believe everything you're... Three. I was thinking, maybe I might be a businessman. I thought you wanted to be a writer. Well, I could be both. A rich industrialist who writes novels about the Old West on the side. You can be whatever you want, son, but for now, let's concentrate on getting some food on the table. Unless you're planning on striking literary gold in the next day or two, that is. No more talking now, boy. We need to save our energy for that herd. We haven't got time to rest, Paul. Easy. Are you getting back on or not? Let's go. What are you waiting for? This is a messy one. How do you do, sir? All right. We should get moving. Come on, easy up now. Why you 
moving away. Who told you that? I kept hearing people say their name. That, that's all. Yeah, I caught up with Bill and Dutch. We had some old business needed settling. Where are they now? They're gone, son. We won't be seeing them again. They were angry at you, weren't they? That's why we had to leave. They was just good men who turned bad. I'll explain it to you one day. I thought I'd never see you again. Some of our public servants in Blackwater sent you back on another homicidal errand to protect and save us from Lord only knows what. Thankfully not, sir. I was hoping you might still be able to sell me some cattle. My boy, it would be a pleasure. Bonnie's out in the crowd now. She'll be more than happy to help you. <laughs> Take care now, Mr. McFarland. Good luck. Come on. Do my eyes deceive me? A devil walks among us. I said I'd be back when this was all over, Miss McFarland. After the barn fire, you remember? Of course I remember. I just didn't believe a word of it. So, you've come for some cattle? Yeah, I'm finally starting up my farm again. Or trying to, at least. You'll be fine. You've been taught well. Come on, then.
Come on. That's all up. Jack! Wait there! I'm coming! You alright? You're not hurt, are you? No. I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I wasn't scared, honest. Sorry you had to see that, son. Those men won't be stealing from anybody else. Jack! Head left up the road towards home! I know where I'm going, Paul. Nice work, son! We made it! You did real good out there! Go on! Hit your horse and wait for me by the stable! That's a fine herd we got ourselves! So we're ranchers now? Did a good job, son. Nice shooting. 